Can bourbon and religion mix? We talk about that and more on The Fred Minnick Show with special guest Lucas Hogue coming up. The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by 291 Colorado Whiskey and by Michter's American Whiskeys. Lucas Hogue had a number one Billboard song. Uh, he's got a new one out called Stay in Touch. He is uh, a really good friend of Uncle Nearest. I met him uh, a couple years ago at the Uncle Nearest Distillery opening, and this is when that interview took place. Now, if you're wondering why it took me two years to release this interview, well, it's very, very simple. I have a lot of uh, these kind of I've kind of I've got about 20 or 30 of these just kind of all over the place and I had a uh, and like here's a here's a couple more here look at that boom just hard drives everywhere certain hard drives everywhere I had a I had a guest who uh, backed out on me and another guest who backed out on me and then I've got some interviews that I can't release until like May. So I was like scrambling to find a good interview that I'd done in the past where the sound is good. And this Lucas Hogue interview just fell on my lap and I could not believe it. This was actually the very first interview that I did for the Fred Minnick show. And I cannot believe I'm just now releasing it, but I'm glad I found it. I'm glad I was able to dust it off because Lucas is a great dude. We talk about a lot of cool stuff. Uh, take a listen, enjoy, watch. However you uh, are are tuning into this, I appreciate you for tuning in, and I do apologize for taking two years to get this to you. Uh, I'm joined by someone I'm actually a big fan of, so Lucas Hogue, thank you so much for for coming on. We're here yeah, at the Uncle Nearest Distillery. Are, thank you. you. You're supportive of the Uncle Nearest? Absolutely. Or? I met Fawn and Keith uh, a couple years ago now, and just hit it off with these guys, and they told me the story about uh, Nearest Green, and I was like, holy cow, I had no idea, you know? Yeah. It's just a great thing that uh, Fawn has been able to do with this brand, and it's growing so fast. I'm so happy for him. Yeah, it, it, to see what they've done here with this with this farm and, yeah. uh, you know, bringing the, you know, the story, you know, back. Absolutely. In a lot of ways, it's amazing. So you are, your your career fascinates me because nice. you've been, you've been at, you've been, You've been in the grind. Yeah, absolutely. Been doing it since I was a little kid, you know. Yeah. And I had three bands going when I was still in high school and first year of college. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it, from Thursday to Sunday, I was playing either in a, a bar, bar band or a worship band. <laughs> I had a worship band called Extreme Devotion, and then I had a band called Borderline, and also a band called uh, Southern Cross that I was fronting for a while. And it was just nonstop. I couldn't get enough. So there's like, I mean, you got like, uh, you got God, you got like a, a mental disorder. Of course. And then, exactly. and then you've got Southern Cross, which absolutely is a big debate about together. What that, you know, so I, it's, you, you're like a walking like conundrum. Oh, yes. You got to soak it all up, you know, when you're just getting into it and do as much as you can and, and figure out what you love the most. And, and you'll gravitate towards that and, and it'll, it'll latch on to you. So you grew up in, in Nebraska. Are you yes. a Cornhuskers Absolutely. fan? Absolutely. And I'm glad we have Scott Frost back at the helm. Hopefully we're going to have a better, uh, better season this year. So I, I, um, I went to Oklahoma State. Oh, gosh. And I, I don't really, know if we can do this interview. Well, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's over now. Uh, I, I really miss having Nebraska in the in the too. Big Twelve. I love those rivalries, I and it was, too, and it was like it wasn't like the hate that we have for Texas or Oklahoma. <laughs> like we actually respect in Nebraska. Yeah, yeah, and know? it was a healthy, uh, good rivalry. Yeah, yeah I mean, you guys normally beat us, but nonetheless, well, you know, <laughs> you had some great teams. So yeah, w one of the things that I like to to do is I like to talk to people about you know kind of their connection and their background with with uh drinking and it is um it, it 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 we live in this culture of like it's either extremes people either don't want to drink at all sure or they drink way too much <laughs> right. so what was what was your first drink my first drink was actually peppermint schnapps oh that's just that lovely. my grandpa gave me we were actually out doing a hunt and it was really cold out and uh, we were, got home, we were pheasant hunting, and we were cleaning birds, and, and I remember my grandpa going, this will warm you up, and he gave me a little taste of this peppermint schnapps, and it sure did. <laughs> it warmed you up pretty fast. Yeah, how old were you? 
I think I was 13. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So that's definitely underage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom and dad were probably not around. I remember that for sure. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing about grandpas, right? They exactly. get you, they get you around uh, before you, yeah. <laughs> before you get caught. But, uh, uh, so in the, you, you, you were in the like gospel and the, and the Christian oh, yeah. community. Um, in the evangelical world, it's like drinking is not necessarily always accepted. It is in Kentucky, but <laughs> it's you know, all different world. <laughs> yeah, it's just throw Kentucky out. But <laughs> what what is it about religion and alcohol that just doesn't always seem to? That's a good you know, question. I think it's different for everybody. And my my opinion is, you know, if you're not doing it in excess and it's just in moderation, and you're, you're just having a drink to have a drink. I mean, I love tasting all sorts of different alcohols. Um, I've got a great buddy of mine who's got a winery out in Napa that sends me amazing wine. And I, I'm become a wine snob, you know, and, and uh, you know, drinking the Uncle Nearest is amazing just over ice itself, you know, but I'm a tequila guy. I love all sorts of different flavors. So, I mean, I don't drink in excess. There's a couple of guys in my band that don't even drink at all. <laughs> and um, it's, it's a great yin and yang, you know, everybody's got their own opinion on, on what alcoholism is i guess <laughs> yeah now you're on the road a lot like i mean yeah. you just came back from you, you were in colorado yeah i was actually out filming for my new hunting and lifestyle show so i was out hunting elk on the, on the mountain and five days of just non-stop in the woods nice and loving it and having a great time and every time we get done we come back and have a drink so my <laughs> uh i have a magazine called uh bourbon plus okay. and, and my publishing partner his uh his magazine is covey rise the the bird hunting magazine he told oh, nice and he told me he knew that you were a big bird hunter yeah, yeah so love it. so when you were d when you're done with the with a good hunt what are you normally drinking you know it depends if it's a hot hunt i'll come back and have it. just the coldest beer i can Mm -hmm. You know, I, what, I really what's hot love. like for you? Like eighty-five degrees, ninety-five. Yeah, eighty-five, even seventy-five is pretty hot. You know, seventy-five is hot. Oh yeah, yeah. When you're out running up and down a mountain, seventy-five feels like one hundred and ten. All right, that's, <laughs> I hear you. You know, I mean, it just depends on the temperature for me. Honestly, it can change. My 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 palate changes a lot, but I guess my go-to at the end of a night um, is probably a little te tequila silver with uh, club soda and lime. Okay. I just love sipping on that in the evening if I want something that's going to kind of mellow me out a little bit, I'll, I'll reach for a whiskey, hands down. All right, back to you being on the road. What are you drinking when you're on the plane? Oh, gosh. It's definitely, uh, there's not a whole lot of options on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> so it's usually just a beer, like a Dos Equis or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Never try to, like, have a whiskey or do like play with their cocktails? So I... I Southwest is a, an, I'm an ambassador for Southwest, mm -hmm. been for two years, and they sent this little cocktail kit out. It had some like maple like honey syrup with it, and a little uh, a jigger, mm -hmm. and then they had you order a bottle of champagne, and you mix the two together with, with the jigger and the, and the syrupy stuff. And man, I have to admit, that was pretty tasty. It was pretty darn good. They're not giving that to us. On the, <laughs> you can buy the, it. In the coach. Uh, you can buy it on the Southwest magazine. Really? It's yeah. in there? Like yeah. just, uh, I Absolutely. might do that next time. It's I really cool. A lot. I'm in a little tin. It's got the little stir stick. All right, so what are, you, what are you drinking before you go on the, on the, on the stage? On stage, it's, it's always a little tequila silver, club soda and lime. There's just something about it. All right. um, it's, that, uh, it's good for the vocal yeah, cords. It really is. It kind of gives a little numbing factor there. <laughs> and what are you drinking when, when you're done? What do you, what's your celebration drink? More tequila? No, actually it's not. Um, it's kind of a, a, a mellow out drink for me is actually Uncle Nearest, believe it or not. I had Uncle Nearest um, showcased in my music video uh, called The Power of Garth. Oh, um, nice. When they were just getting their brand off the ground and, and I was putting a new single out. It's me, and that's how we opened the scene up is me popping a bottle and pouring uh, a nice glass of Uncle Nearest. And Speaking of glasses, it. I think we have some glass hey, glasses now. let's do it. Nice. Oh, fantastic. Well, you can do the honors? Yeah. Right. I haven't tried the, the new one yet, the small so, batch. Yeah, so this is a little... Uh, let's try that. Fun little blend. So one thing I read about you, it, you, you seem very ambitious. Like you want to... You want to own the world. I do. I and want to conquer it. You want to, you want to own and conquer, uh, you know, country music. But this is such a crowded space. Oh, yeah. It's so crowded. It really is. And everybody says, you know, what's, uh, 
what's your what's your motivation? What's your plan? How are you going to do it? Because you know there are gigantic record labels out there. I'm not on a gigantic record label. I'm on a beautiful small little label that we are small and mighty. We can move fast and do a lot more things than some of the other labels can. And I literally, I just tell everybody, I was like, you need to put blinders on and not worry about what everybody else is doing because they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Do what mm-hmm. you need to be doing. And that path is going to light up like crazy. What I love about your sound is, like, I grew up in, in the 90s, and you remind me of that kind of, like, old school Thanks, man. country sound. And, like, it feels like country is going more toward, like, pop and I, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, it was moving that way, and there's always going to be that that road going down. But now there's like this new wave where people are actually wanting that yeah. older sound. So maybe I'm going to be right there with them again. But I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I grew up on the '90s country too. I mean, Garth was like my, I mean, he was yeah my guy. You know? He went to Oklahoma State. I know, and I'm just, not going to hold that against him. Yeah. But. <laughs> But yeah, I just tell people, just keep going down your path and find what, what's right for you. And don't worry about what everybody else is doing. So one of the things that I, I respect about you is that you can like have a, have a drink and have a conversation about it. Definitely. Um, this, this genre of music seems to really struggle with, with the extremes of like having a drink. You know, sure. today there's a, lot of, there's a lot of country music stars who have come out with with sobriety Mm -hmm. you know saying like you know they just can't touch the stuff yeah what what is it about country music that you know gives you that extreme and moderation is like seems to be out of grasp for a lot of people well i think you have to dissect that a little bit um it's to me it's not just country music it's it's kind of the music industry and the entertainment industry as a whole um, I know in, in my world, in the country music world, when you're out doing like radio tours, you have to go to like four or five radio stations a day and you have to wine and dine some of the, the uh, program directors and the DJs and stuff. So we go out to dinners and it's like that every single day, every single wow. day. So you're, you're drinking, you're having dinners, trying not to get fat on the road and trying yeah, not yeah, to yeah. drink too much on the road. So, and sometimes it, it can grab a hold of people and they can't know how to rein it in and it just runs rampant and then by that time they don't know how to fix it and I guess when I'm growing up my my dad did, never drank that much my mom liked to have a cocktail here and there but uh, I think I, I adopted more of the I can have a cocktail I can have a lot of cocktails mm-hmm. and I can still rein it in and not have to worry about it what one really interesting uh, point about the country stars who have chosen to you know the path of sobriety is they own it like they'll go out on the talk show circuit like sure. you'll see like tim mcgraw keith urban yeah you know they're out there talking about their their battles with with addiction mm-hmm. and you don't see that from from the other music genres like there's there's yeah. something very sharing and charismatic about this genre that you don't yeah. see in a lot of other music absolutely i think i think there were in the country music world we're a little more touchable that makes sense. Well, we're more of the people's people. If you know, mm-hmm. makes sense. Um, some of the other genres, I think their their team around them kind of makes people stay at a distance and wants to have a little bit more of a facade. You know, maybe that illusion of the fact that they are not who they may say they are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? If that makes sense, I don't know. Let's yeah. Drink, how, let's drink. Let's let's have a let's have, have a little, little bit drink. of whiskey. Here's to Uncle Nearest. Cheers. Mm, that's good. That is really good. So you have, how many songs do you cite whiskey in? Because I've, <laughs> I've listened to quite a few of you. I've listened to everything you've done. There's a lot. You, I mean, it's like whiskey this, whiskey that. Yeah. I'm like, I was starting to get the feel that you like whiskey. I love whiskey. I really yeah. do. I need to write more tequila songs too because I love tequila and wine. But um, so I've got a song I'll start the set with. It's called Bad People. I wrote it with my buddy Jordan Davis, and it starts out about whiskey, about moonshiners, and how his his dad was a moonshiner at the time, or his grandfather, and uh, they were running liquor and stuff just to get by and just to make make ends meet, you know. Mm -hmm. Ended up in prison and all that stuff. Not a bad people, just did bad things, you know, that kind of thing. So it's it's a fun song, you know, and it just goes on and on down the line, a lot of little stories that are in there. And then I've got a song called "To Go with the Whiskey." Yeah, Um, it's about. uh, me sitting in a smoky old bar all by myself, feeling like, why am I sitting here by myself? So I call my wife up and, and tell her to come down and, and save me from 
me being that creeper weird guy in the back corner of a smoky dark bar. That's the worst. That's the worst <laughs> thing that a, a guy can have can be told exactly. that he's the creep. Right? You, you know, don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be the creepy guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never. You know, you look back. So we both like like the old school country. Yeah. I went back and watched some old Conway Twitty. Oh. Gosh. I think he's brilliant. Yeah. Do you think you could pull off some of his old garb, like the... The nudie suits and all the, that? The, <laughs> yeah. Actually, my mom is an amazing seamstress, and she made, like, the, the paisley with the rhinestones and everything. You know, she, I used to wear some of that sometimes. I mean, <laughs> that, that's, like, the one thing that's missing in, in music right now, right. The, those old, uh, you know, turquoise and, um, brim, you know, rimstone, all kinds of stuff on yeah. there. It's like, I Absolutely. think they put everything but their cat on those shirts. Oh, totally. It, it was crazy. Yeah, Manuel... Um, if you ever look at his stuff, man, he was the, if, if, if I'm correct, he was basically the understudy for Nudie when Nudie was making all those rhinestone suits. And then when Nudie passed, Manuel took over and started making all ah. that for all the stars and everything and continued that generation thing going on. And to this day, he's still making some great stuff. That's awesome. All right, so one, one last thought on this kind of like theme of like what 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 you drink mm -hmm. and how you drink G tell me what's your favorite place to have a drink my backyard around the fire with my wife friends if they're there but just hanging out in the backyard it means we're home which we're never home that much yeah so i love being home in my backyard a little fire going it's just the best place for me what's your be what's the best bar you've been to while you're on the road ooh great question it would have to be in Belgium. Oh. Brussels, excuse me. It was in Brussels. Called a bar called Delirium. They serve every kind of beer, alcohol there, but they had a nineteen point two five beer. I never had a beer with that much alcohol. That's uh <laughs> that's, that, that's packing some heat. <laughs> it was like a can of oil. <laughs> it was great. It was fun though. And you know, last question. You're at a Nebraska football game. Mm hmm What do you bring in, in your flask? To the game. Uh, it, again, it goes back to the, the temperature. If it's a cold, super cold game, it's going to be whiskey. If it's a hot game, it's going to be tequila all day. All right. Well, good luck to Nebraska this year. Amen to that, brother. And hopefully you get you have to go into the, the January, February months I where it's so. going to be really cold. I hope so. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching that uh, and listening to that episode with Lucas Hoag. Lucas is a fantastic guy. Make sure you're listening to his uh, new uh, single, uh, Stay in Touch Now. Uh, it is uh, fantastic. He's, uh, you know, he's just lighting the lighting country music, you know, on uh, on fire. And he's he's a really big supporter of the military. So I appreciate that. Just an overall good dude. So make sure you're checking him out as you can. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, give me a, give me a give me a, some love out on the on the podcast world. Any kind of a review uh, help goes a long way for explaining what we do in the in the uh, in the world of podcasts. It helps with the algorithms. But that's gonna do it for this week, folks. Be safe out there. Remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers, everybody.